what we try to do is to present Rossini's scores in as accurate a way as we possibly can, but always keeping in mind the needs of practical musicians. In the case of Maometto Secondo, we know that he first wrote the piece for Naples in 1820, and then he revised it. He loved this opera. Obviously, he loved the opera. He revised it to open the season in Venice in 1822-23, where he later wrote Semiramide for that same theater and that same season. But for Santa Fe, we're doing the Neapolitan version, which we think very much is the finest version of all of the versions that he did. That it does have resemblance to Romeo and Juliet in the sense that you do have this impossible love between warring factions. But they're not just factions. Each one stands for something. They stand for countries in the sense of Maometto is a conqueror. Furthermore, she met him under false pretenses. She met him, she says at one point, I still love Uberto, which is the name he used, but I do not love Maometto, the conqueror. Uh, and he's very, she's very clear about that, that she will not give in, despite her feelings, to Uberto, to Maometto. It's very interesting. I've seen one wonderful performance of this in which Sam Raimi played the part of... Uh, of Maometto, and the, uh, the lady who played the part of Anna was a young woman by the name of Cecilia Gastia. But Gastia, at the very end, walked up a flight of stairs, reaching for him as if she still loved him, and then fell back dead. Uh, with her hair going down the series. Uh, this, she was in white, and her black hair went down the stairs. It was an extraordinary moment. I mean, you, you just you took your breath away. Uh, I'm sure that David Alden will do something brilliant in his own right. It doesn't have to be the same as this, but I will never forget that image of her still loving him, still expressing her love for him, and yet not able to do anything but take her life because she could not allow it to happen. Rossini went out of his way to make this opera so that the, the public would be sympathetic to Maometto. In the first act, the first act is extraordinary. Now what does he do? He starts with the three characters, Eriso, Calbo, and Anna, meeting and beginning as if they're singing a simple trio. And then a cannon shot is heard as Maometto and his forces attack. And everybody disappears off stage. The trio stops and the women come in. She sings a prayer, a gorgeous prayer, one of the most beautiful single things in the opera. And after that, they come back together. They form another group, the same trio, and they start all over again. But now they sing a, a different trio that continues until its end. The whole piece is at least 25 minutes long, an enormous trio. There's nothing like it, as I say. But at the end of it, instead of simply concluding on E major, which is where we are in the music, the music begins to modulate. So the result is that by the time it ends on a dominant seventh to C minor. You can't applaud there. So the audience has had to sit on its hands for the, all this period of time, there's been nothing that they can applaud for. At that point, in comes Maometto. He sings this gorgeous cavatina, Duce di tanti eroi, uh, you know, the, the, I'm the leader of so many heroes, etc. And at that moment, when he's finished, the audience bursts out in applause because they've been waiting to applaud all night. They haven't been able to because Rossini hasn't let them. Uh, it's an extraordinary, I mean, and there's no question he must have meant this, but the result is that the audience is built in to feel sympathy for someone who, on one level, they shouldn't feel sympathy for because he is a king and acts like a king. He's got to sing this extraordinary aria, after which there is a whole finale in which he's very important, and he's got to sing that out, and he's got to be present for all of it, and so that Maometto is a very live creature. And then in the second act, we hear him mostly at the beginning of the act. He has this duet with, with uh, Anna, 
and then he sings a big aria himself, and then he disappears until the last minute, and everything else is given to Anna and Eriso and Calbo, and they are given the music that leads up to the finale where she kills herself, and then he comes in only after this has happened. Uh, it's quite an extraordinary part from that point of view. It's just, you know, it's just wonderful. There is no moment in which you aren't following these characters and following along with their thoughts and their, and their uh, emotions. It's very impressive from that point of view. But uh, Maometto had no problems at all. It was a perfect work, I think. And I think it's, a, it's one of the really great serious dramas of Italian opera in the 19th century. Santa Fe has represented for me a place where you could work seriously and which you know that the conductors and singers are all taking their work very seriously. As general editor of the Rossini project, I am really responsible for every single note that we print. I don't allow anything to pass by me that I have not seen and thought about. I nonetheless feel that it is my duty to have every single note verified. And so I look at every source and I look at all the sources that we need to use to put together this score. I think this is an opera that has so many beauties that the audience is going, in fact, to love it. They cannot not love it, especially if it's well directed. I know it will be well sung and well played because I know what the San what the Santa Fe troupe is like, and it's a wonderful troupe. But if it is well directed as well, and I have every reason to think it will be, since I have great confidence in David Alden, and I've worked with him before, and I've seen his work before, and I know that he's a very serious man. Sometimes he will push things very far in one direction or another, but he's never not aware of the musical and the dramatic values of the original. Nothing that he does seems entirely out of place. Uh, and I think that the, the audience will realize this and they'll find that there is so much beautiful music in this piece and there's so much very sincere drama.